So again, welcome to CRM, Six Weeks to Success, Lesson 1, Session 2. Uh, as I said, I had problems logging in. I hope uh, that's not happening. It seemed to be a system problem. It wasn't my system, so I'm hoping that it's not preventing uh, any of um, our would-be attendees from, from logging in or joining in on the webinar, um, but we'll just see as uh, more people come in. Um, but we're going to go ahead and proceed. Uh, first and foremost, last week we started this series, Six Weeks to Success. That was week one. Uh, it wasn't a lesson, but it was an orientation and an overview of the sessions, uh, the total syllabus of the Six Weeks to Success course. Um, if you missed that, please, please send me an email so you can get a link. Um, with that link, you'll be able to watch a video recording of the orientation. It is that important um, that you uh, have the benefit of the overview that I did last week, if you missed it, um, as we proceed uh, today in Lesson 1 and then beyond that through the remaining five weeks of this six-week course series. The focus today is the tools of CRM. And hopefully you can all see my screen. I've clicked on screen sharing, so you should be able to see that. Um, what we're talking about is acquiring and mastering the tools of CRM. What are they? A lot of people don't know. Okay, to, to conduct comprehensive and diligent CRM, what actually do I need? Is there a requisite list? Uh, is there a special software? Um, what do I need? And that's what we're going to cover today. It's really understanding what the tools of CRM are, um, why you need each one or what part each one plays as a component uh, in your overall CRM plan. And then, in fact, um, having a plan, actually having one. So uh, let's get started. I, I have a brief PowerPoint uh, for this purpose. Uh, I'm going to minimize the screen or the navigator on the right side of this that allows me to see any questions. Uh, if you have them, go ahead and type them. I will continue um, to check it periodically. Um, let me know if you're hearing me. Give me, I've got a note from Michael saying he cannot hear anything. Um, and that was as of a minute ago. So before I start, this would be a good point for me to check and make sure that people can hear me. Please type in the chat portion um, of your interface and let me know if you can or cannot hear me. If you can hear me, uh, there you go. He says it was a setting on his end. Stefan's giving me the affirmative. So with that, I'm going to go ahead. Thank you. As I said, I'm going to minimize this part of my screen, which allows me to see your questions during the webinar, but I will be maximizing it and taking a look um, periodically, and I'll do that every so often so that I can see if you've got questions. So if you do, please go ahead and type them. If I don't respond immediately, that's okay. I will get to you the next time I check for questions. So the tools, what do you need to conduct diligent and what I call comprehensive uh, CRM? CRM software or online platform. Um, I'm going to uh, later mention a couple. This is just going to be an entry or an overview to what today's session will cover. So I'm not going to expand on too many things as I do this list right now. I'll expand upon them as we go forward into the hour. Um, but CRM software or an online platform is, I, I think, about the first must um, in doing CRM. Otherwise, you're uh, going to be doing it via carrier pigeon or some other um, dated uh, method, which is not going to be very effective. So as we talk about tools, your software platform or online platform or web-based platform for CRM is one. Uh, hold on one moment. That's the camera. No, oh, no, see if there are people on. Some people are having problems logging in. Is there anyone on there? Carrie's still on? Okay. 
Sorry for that. I guess some people were having problems logging in, so that seems to be solved now. I apologize for the interruption. Properly categorized and segregated uh, database, and we will cover that extensively because that is um, the primary um, method or means to conduct satisfactory or successful, I should say, successful CRM. Um, having a properly categorized database um, starts with having the correct software or online platform um, that gives you the ability in terms of functionality or structure um, to be able to segregate and categorize your database. And I'm talking about subcategories below subcategories below subcategories. So um, categorization is um, everything in terms of CRM when we talk about functionality. Um, having a good mail-out service provider, I'm going to cover that for you as well because, let's face it, we can't do anything, uh, or I'm saying everything, ourselves. I think one of the um, biggest um, leverages that you can get uh, or apply to conducting good CRM is uh, third-party providers, not just in mail-out, but in, in multiple components of your CRM protocol. Any opportunity we have to automate um, our CRM processes or any opportunity we have to consolidate the actual effort or physical effort on our part um, is always good for being able to uh, leverage and do more with your CRM and more be more effective about it. A uh, good printer or print shop. You want to have access or a go-to printer, um, and that can be a professional uh, print shop. Um, we can recommend several for you. Uh, locally here, we use a print shop called Champion Print and Design. Um, great prices, very high quality. Um, they're able to control their pricing because they don't ship out for a lot. In other words, you walk in there, you are definitely in a print shop. I think they have every kind of excuse me, every kind of machine known to mankind. So um, they even print our large A-frame signs on vinyl. Um, they can do banners, flyers, brochures, postcards, everything, and they have very quick turnaround. So if you need something and you haven't planned it out that far and you need a quick turnaround, um, they can generally do that uh, for you. Business cards, I tell everyone, your business card is the most powerful CRM uh, tool or tool in your CRM um, uh, tool belt um, because CRM is about client relationship management. So that's in fact what the uh, CRM stands for, client relationship management um, and business cards is the beginning uh, of any client relationship. It's, it's how we extend um, our hand in sales. You should have a business card in hand when you do so. Web and online uh, and social media presence. So when I say online presence and web presence, that's not just social media. There's more than there's more to it than just social media. But um, that is a tremendous uh, portion of uh, your online presence is your social media presence. And we are going to cover that a bit today uh, because some of these tools are not physical tools. Um, the tools of CRM include the some of the standardized actions of CRM, which you must be doing. Um, branded, personalized, custom marketing pieces. Um, that's a lot. It's a mouthful. Um, so your marketing pieces shouldn't be vanilla. They shouldn't be bland. Um, the whole purpose of conducting CRM, the whole purpose of putting money and resources, be they time or money, behind your CRM is to um, actually have it be rewarding or result in a return to you specifically. Um, if you want to help the office uh, or the company um, in general uh, brand itself in the marketplace, and by all means, go ahead and create and distribute and allocate your resources and the distribution of bland and vanilla marketing pieces. Now, if you want to conduct good CRM um, upon your personal database, um, for your specific and personal return, then those pieces need to be branded, personalized, custom marketing pieces. I say that because a lot of people will use services where they're just having bland and general pieces distributed to a broad database, and that's not CRM. That's uh, actually guerrilla marketing, if you think about it. It's not CRM at all. CRM is the antithesis of guerrilla marketing, where guerrilla marketing is very broad, general, just kind of throw everything against the wall, see what sticks. CRM is marketing with specificity, 
Um, and that's how the relationship is built in CRM with the prospect or the client. Sure. I'm talking here, uh, I'm hoping that I've got people here in real estate, mortgage, um, insurance, builders, solar, commercial finance, everything. Because what we're talking about here with CRM is not industry specific. It's certainly not limited to realtors and mortgage professionals. This is sales, ladies and gentlemen. This is how sales gets done. I did not invent it. Um, I did not create it. This is how CRM is how sales has been getting done successfully um, for many, many, many years before I came onto the scene. So um, keep in mind that this is for everybody. If you're a recruiter, even uh, yeah. because recruiting is sales. Exactly. Um, the biggest thing you want to have, um, the most important thing you want to have as you move forward and go out there is a plan. If you do not have a plan uh, of action, then you'll have no action most likely. Um, you have to understand mm -hmm. that uh, to have um, CRM, even in a CRM plan without an action plan, to put those CRM actions um, into play, um, you're not serving your greater purpose. You're not going to see the results that I know CRM um, has been proven time and time again um, to produce. Uh, you won't get the results if you don't do it right. You won't get the results if you don't take the CRM actions and activities and put them in play in a greater plan. It's not a marketing plan. It is a plan or what I call an action plan um, for you. It can be your daily action plan. It can be a weekly action plan, but you've got to have a plan that puts these CRM activities into play. So we're talking about when we talk about getting the software. So get organized. The whole purpose, and I push this, and I'm, I'm so happy to push this uh, so forcefully upon you, is that Getting the right software is not just about getting the software that's got the most bells and whistles advertised. What you're looking for in your CRM software is real, true, relevant functionality. The ability to be able to structure, uh, and, I, and I, I put these not necessarily in order of priority, but it's pretty close as I'm looking at the screen now. Um, first and foremost, as you're out there in the marketplace looking for a good CRM software, um, you want to think about does that software, does that platform give you the ability to categorize and then subcategorize your database? Do you have the ability to create multiple categories and then underneath that multiple subcategories and marketing groups or contact groups? Uh, if you don't, first and foremost, then you need to be looking at a different software because at the very base, base uh, functionality or structure or provision, you've got to have the ability to categorize and subcategorize your database. Secondly, it would be connectivity. And that's just a convenience um, aspect of it because what you do in your social media, I'm sorry, what you do in your CRM, you want to have automatically resonate or matriculate to your social media accounts. So you want to be able to have a software or platform that has connectivity to Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, YouTube, Google+, uh, some of the other social media um, sites such as LinkedIn. Um, so that when you do something within your CRM tool, it can automatically post or go out to your social media network of accounts. Um, you want to be able to blog within your uh, CRM tool. Um, many of them have the ability to do that. Many of them do not. Um, try to pick one that does. Um, you also, again, either a CRM tool that has a website uh, for our realtors. They know conversion comes with a wonderful website with IDX search um, capability. Um, some CRM tools do not come with a website, but they come with um, the ability and compatibility with most, most web providers, um, and you're able to integrate your website into the CRM tool. This is vital. Um, the first two are vital for convenience, as I said, because what you do once, you'll end up having to do two or three or four or five times, and that can become extremely redundant and time-consuming. So if you can find a software that offers you the connectability, uh, the, the connectivity and compatibility to your CRM tool um, and to your web, uh, between your CRM tool and your web um, presence and accounts, then that's going to save you a whole lot of time and effort. Um, secondly, um, the reason for the website is because 
the ability to link your website to your CRM tool um, provides a whole nother function uh, which we call lead capture. Most CRMs are meant to be database um, components and give you the ability to actual, actually conduct CRM, which you'll find out later is messaging. Messaging to your database is the main process of CRM. Um, having a website as a lead generator, uh, one of the tentacles that you have out there in the uh, marketplace, uh, the online marketplace, um, if you have website and the ability to lead uh, generate without um, the CRM behind it or connected to it, which would afford you the ability to lead capture, then you're kind of going to have to manually insert yourself in the middle so that you're capturing the leads from the website and placing them into the CRM. If you have a CRM tool that allows you that connectivity, then that process is automated. So therefore, the leads that are generated at the website are actually captured and then deposited into your CRM and that's extremely critical. Otherwise, as I said, you're going to have to get in there and do that manually, or you're going to have these two autonomous functions just going and clocking out there, and there's no, uh, there's no efficiency in that. So at a minimum, uh, the functionality of your, your selected CRM tool, you should be able to have direct messaging. So, for example, um, there are database uh, tools and softwares out there that do not have the automated messaging component um, as a function of that, of that software. Um, that's critical because, as I said again, the whole idea of CRM is to message to your database. So if you're having just a database tool, which is not truly a CRM tool, then you're going to lose out on that and you're really not doing CRM. This is all about doing diligent, comprehensive CRM. So don't just get a database tool, get an actual CRM tool. Um, that tool should then therefore have the ability to do uh, CRM automated drip campaigns. These are eDrip or email drip campaigns whereby the CRM tool is automatically sending pre-written messages um, that are themed uh, and hopefully written uh, with very specific content to go to a specific group so that you can assign, again, your categories and your subcategories um, into these campaigns and they're getting the benefit of extremely uh, relevant um, and on-point messaging. So the ability to automate that is got to be key in your software selection because otherwise, again, you're going to be doing that manually. Um, and as we talk about the uh, typical database size um, in our industry, whatever industry you're in, um, it's market driven typically. So um, in good times, you may be able to make a killing with a 300 contact database. Um, in slower or leaner times, you may need closer to 500 in your particular industry. Um, either way, three to 500 contacts or more um, can be pretty, pretty uh, labor intensive if you're talking about doing some of these uh, functions manually. That's why um, the best CRM tools offer the highest degree of automation. So some of the samples I was asked, uh, in fact, it was Michael asked me if I was going to um, suggest or recommend any um, Salesforce. There are lots of lots of CRM tools out there. Um, I'm really not really not going to advocate for any particular tool. Um, what I advocate for is that you just have something. Um, I do coaching sessions all the time and many a time I ask where's your database or ask we get to how many you have in your database, your SOI, your initial contacts um, and whatever the answer is I, I then ask the next question which is okay well where are they housed? Where do you have your contacts presently? Um, a lot of people hold up their phone and that's not a CRM tool, that's not a database tool, it's an address book. And that's not going to serve you and give you the ability to conduct CRM. Uh, give you the ability to speed dial people, but that's, again, not CRM. So your phone is not an answer. So when I talk about all the tools out there, the platform, Salesforce, Top Producer, uh, 7i, um, all of these tools that are out there, I don't really care which one you have. I just 
you know, as long as it meets the minimum functionality, the optimal structuring, and provides the connectivity I was just talking about, I advocate that you just get your contacts into a CRM tool. Um, let's begin conducting CRM so you can see the positive results that come from that when it's properly done. Can't be done from your phone. Uh, I tell people sometimes uh, if it's cost driven, you know, they're not very expensive. I mean, we're talking 14 to $39 a month for most of them. Um, and, you know, Outlook is free. But again, Outlook is not a CRM tool. Outlook is one of those database tools. So it uh, provides some degree of structure where you can categorize and subcategorize, but there's no direct messaging. Um, there's no real connectivity to your social media or online presence. There's certainly no drip marketing um, or even really direct uh, marketing or messaging, I'm sorry, to speak of. So Outlook is somewhere, at least it gets it out of your phone. So I tell people as I'm coaching them, if you can't afford or are not ready to make the CRM platform or software move yet, at least get them out of your phone, get them into um, at least Outlook at the very least, a database software or a database platform, and then let's start there. But ultimately and optimally, you of course want to get them into a real uh, real live CRM tool with all of the above here. Um, the one I use is called Office VP. There's a link there if you can capture that link or jot it down or whatever you have to do. Um, that software gives you a free one month trial. It is um, the bomb, if I can still say that, uh, beyond the 90s, but it's an incredible software. I'm still uh, as a CRM expert, I'm still learning daily what this software can do. Um, probably there's uh, maybe 40% or maybe 30% total function functionality that I will never even get to. This thing is so robust, um, it really covers everything. Now, the reason I use that is because I'm using CRM beyond real estate. So for our realtors, conversion is, I mean, if I could use conversion, I would use that over Office VP if I was a real estate agent, but I'm not a real estate agent, so conversion doesn't serve all of my needs. And if you're uh, on this webinar and you're not a realtor, you're not a real estate agent, then conversion is not for you. It is a uh, realtor specific CRM tool. It is probably one of the best that I've ever um, encountered uh, for that purpose. But I use Office VP, as I said, because it gives me um, reach, scope, um, beyond uh, just simply real estate. So um, Office VP is worth the try. Conversion, if you're a realtor, you definitely need to get that yesterday. Um, and then Salesforce and some of the others. Um, Salesforce is a little bit more costly. Uh, Salesforce really has no specificity, um, whereas conversion is very specific, specific to realtors. Office VP is specific um, to um, our type of sales. Uh, but Salesforce is very bland and very vanilla. It's just for general purposes. It's a great tool. I've used it uh, uh, for a few years uh, and at another uh, company. Um, but I don't recommend it for this application because for the money you're paying for it, you can do a lot better just by consolidating the specificities to what you're doing, whether it's insurance, mortgage, um, uh, home services, uh, commercial finance, whatever it might be. Again, for realtors, I recommend you jump on conversion just as quickly as you can contact um, Silviana, I guess, about uh, conversion. So leverage. I love leverage. I uh, hope everyone's with me. Let me do a check before I move on, see if I've got any questions. Nope. No questions. Okay, remember if you have questions, I've got the window minimized, but I will check it periodically. So any questions, go ahead and type them. I will get to them. So good 30 third party uh, providers, service providers. Um, we're going to talk about that as it pertains to mail out services. Um, and this is leverage that you should use. Again, the ability to conduct diligent, comprehensive CRM on a larger database or a growing database is going to have to be largely automated um, to whatever extent you can uh, leverage the ability to do more by bringing in third-party providers and contracting with them or just using their online services. Um, this is how you can conduct uh, CRM um, on a broad level to a large database and still maintain the same uh, specific target marketing and messaging um, to your database based on 
uh, the categorization of the contact. So you must employ leverage um, to be able to do more. Core fact is one of them. Um, I cannot say enough about core fact. Uh, if you want to check that out, I recommend you do. Uh, I think you just go straight to corefact.com, uh, just as it's written there, corefact.com. Um, Corefact is a uh, pretty incredible service. Um, there's no cost to register uh, an account, so you open an account with Corefact. Um, what they have is a litany, uh, an incredible library of templates, postcards, um, flyers, uh, postcards in all different sizes, standard or smaller sizes. They have the jumbo ones that really stand out. Um, full color, thick cardstock, two-sided print for brochures and, and flyers and everything else. But um, they have a very easy, user-friendly interface or widget that allows you to take a template and then modify it to your use, uh, upload pictures of your own for the front of the postcard, um, upload content or type uh, content uh, for the back of the postcard, your logo, contact information, a marketing message, uh, sales pitch, what have you. Um, they have a lot of just listed and just sold options for real estate agents. Um, so you can really go in there and kind of customize these beautiful cards that they have, uh, beautiful items and marketing pieces. And it's not just postcards. It's much, much more than that. Um, but they allow you the ability to um, customize and personalize, as I was saying earlier, your marketing pieces, but what they do beyond that is once you design the piece, you can have them um, ship a quantity to you. Let's say it's 50 or 100 or 1,000. They will ship that to you. Um, but the greater purpose for core fact is that you can put in an address, um, and then in that address, you can have that be the center point, and you can say you want a radius of uh, 100 or 500 or 300 homes around that central address, and they will generate that list. Then you can mail it. So the cost per piece, uh, depending on your volume, could be end up being anything from, for a postcard, for example, just as, a, as an example, could be anything from 50 to 80 cents per piece. That includes um, printing um, and then mailing as well. So it's all in one. The postage is incorporated in that cost, and it goes out, um, and it's really high quality, and they're very efficient about their mail outs, always on time. There's rarely any delay. Um, the interface is extremely user-friendly. As I said, they will check and double-check with you via email to make sure that your marketing piece is correct uh, and your review is complete and you're satisfied with the final piece. Um, they will also allow you to upload your own database uh, via a CSV file uh, from uh, Microsoft Excel or some other spreadsheet software. So if you have a database, you can upload it into CoreFact and mail out to it regularly. This is going to be a manual thing um, that you'll need to do, but you can go into CoreFact and just manually mail out to your entire database or a segment of that database um, a specific um, area geographically, uh, whether it's a farm area or just an area that you want to um, begin to have a presence in, you can do that all through Corefact, and it's 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 super super efficient, um, and the pricing is very favorable. So I recommend Corefact. I've used it for um, years now. Um, we use it here pretty pretty extensively at ERSL Grove. Um, so I recommend uh, as a branch so for our branch level marketing and uh, for our agents as well. Um, so I recommend you check that out. Um, another one, more costly, um, but very, uh, very efficient in a broad scope. So what I say, when I say that, I mean that uh, almost in a guerrilla marketing type way, you can target it, but there's less targeting. But this is the U.S. Mail Services uh, or the U.S. Mail uh, Post Office. Um, their great service is uh, EDDM, Every Door Direct Mail. You've probably heard of it. Um, Every Door Direct is a service where you can pick um, a carrier's uh, route basically, or area based on the carrier route. Um, so uh, it's not really based on zip code because sometimes you have three or four carrier routes within one zip code or you have uh, three or four 
uh, zip codes within a carrier route. Um, so there's really no science, or at least that I understand. <laughs> there's no real science that I understand to it. I'm sure they have some kind of formula um, for selecting carrier routes. Uh, but on average, it seems to be about maybe three to 500 homes per route. Um, but you have the ability to select that. There's an excellent online interface or widget to select that. They have templated marketing pieces. Um, they're not really standard, so they're kind of quirky. So that was one of the first things I had to get used to um, as a graphic designer and, and person who's used to designing my own stuff. Um, none of the sizes for the pieces are standard. Uh, they've got some quirky, uh, awkward sizes, but very nice uh, pieces. Um, a lot of space there for content. Most of those pieces are larger, not smaller. Um, so every door direct mail out is a service where once you pick that code, you have the piece. Um, the piece will go out to every um, mail recipient, whether it's business or house, in that area. You can specify business over residence or vice versa. <laughs> Excuse me, but uh, for the most part, it's just you pick a zone or an area and you have a piece and that piece goes out to every door the mailman de uh, or, or lady de delivers mail to uh, in their route, every single door. That's why it's called Every Door Direct. Worth using, but um, certainly a lot more costly than Corefact and something you could do manually perhaps, but... Um, Great service. If you want to hit a large area or a specific area, uh, you can do that, but uh, there is a sub substantial cost involved. Constant Contact is actually another um, another service, a third-party provider. Uh, uh, Elite Corporate uses Constant Contact. Those emails you get um, regarding corporate webinars, um, corporate events, and so forth, that's all sent out through Constant Contact. Um, they've been using it for quite some time. Um, I use, I've used Constant Contact um, in total for a number of years now. Um, I'm not using it presently, but um, it's a monthly subscription account, uh, I think, uh, can, and it's based on the number of contacts that you have in there. So if you have uh, 1,500 contacts, that's going to be more money uh, per month than if you just have 250. I believe the um, entry level account is $14 per month. I could be wrong, but it's something of that nature. And then again, it, as I said, it, it increases as you add contacts. So the $14 a month level gets you zero to 500 contacts, I believe, or 750. And then the next level, 750 to 1500, is you know 25 or $24 per month or 29. Um, but you you get the point. But that's how constant contact works. Um, Constant Contact is for email distribution. So this is not a mail-out um, service provider. This is an email service provider. Just as I said, um, the really nice HTML emails um, that uh, you get from corporate, they're using Constant Contact. One of the benefits of Constant Contact is it does have some CRM functionality in that you can automatically set campaigns to go. So you create a campaign with, um, say, 12 messages. You want that to go out once per month. You assign that, uh, you assign a segment or a component or a category or marketing group of your database to that, uh, that outgoing um, campaign. And every month, the next message will go out each month. So until the 12-month campaign is exhausted, the 12 message uh, once per month campaign is exhausted. Then you can start it again. You can uh, assign it to new contacts as you upload them into the system. So it does provide at least the e-drip uh, or electronic drip marketing function of good CRM to a consolidated segregated database. Um, so in that regard, constant contact is good. Uh, but again, like I said, if you're paying a subscription fee for, for a CRM tool of $29 or $39 or $49 a month, whatever it may be, um, that CRM tool, if you shop right, should include this type of functionality. So why pay another $14 a month or $29 a month for that through constant contact? So it's not to be used in conjunction with your CRM tool unless your CRM tool of choice lacks that functionality. Otherwise, it's a redundancy and you're paying twice for the same thing. So just keep that in mind. So when we talk about, let me go back here just to make sure. Okay, we're good. Make sure I didn't skip a slide, folks. 
So social media and online presence. Social media is, uh, well, it's one of those things that's really grown. Um, it's uh, Some of us are just not into it, uh, don't really realize the significance of it. Um, uh, this uh, text here, some time ago, several years actually, I wrote a blog entry um, and it was titled, When Did Social Media Marketing Become a Full-Time Job? That was the name of, or the headline for my blog entry. Um, over um, about a three-month, uh, maybe four-month period, that blog entry, that blog got uh, close to 13,000 um, views. Um, and, you know, I think it was well-written, but that's not the reason why. Obviously, I think it was because just the headline in marketing that blog entry, as I market all my blog entries, um, I think that that headline resonated with people. Um, with sales professionals, you're online and, you know, you, you got to do this, you got to do your LinkedIn, you got to do your Facebook, and then on Facebook you have a business page in addition to your other page and maybe a second business page. Um, they've got to tie into Twitter, you've got Pinterest, um, and you've got to have your YouTube channel, your Google Plus account, and it gets to be crazy because once you set up these accounts, yes, you have to manage them. You have to post content. Um, you can't just create the account. So as we move through, we talk about LinkedIn, Facebook. I've mentioned those already. You got to have them. Uh, if you want to be successful in sales, whether you think you're getting leads or results from your, your online presence, you cannot take it down or neglect it. Um, I, I can't be... Um, I can't stress that enough. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I wasn't really getting um, any results from my, my page, so, you know, I'm really not doing it anymore. It's still up there, but, you know, I'm not messing with it. Um, that is a, that is a, a huge mistake. Um, please understand that even though you think you're not getting a return on your social media, um, first of all, it's not an overnight thing. Um, social media presence is branding. So we talk about the difference between branding and marketing. You understand that marketing is now to affect the immediate result like advertising. Um, branding is not now. It's, it's uh, when you're doing a farm, uh, when you're farming, that's branding. Um, you start thinking about companies like Nike or Coca-Cola. You can probably go to any um, part of the world, any little village anywhere in the world, get a whiteboard, stand in the center of town and draw the Nike swoosh and point to your foot and people will say, oh, Nike, because they've achieved that global successful branding, um, but they've done so over many, many decades and with hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars for a global branding result. Um, what we're talking about in our sales careers and our sales businesses is the same sort of branding, but we're not trying to do it globally. I mean, maybe eventually that would be um, wonderful, but the reality is when we set about this, we're not doing so with the objective of branding ourselves globally as a um, insurance agent or uh, a real estate agent. Uh, the purpose is to brand ourselves in a consolidated or localized area, and we can achieve that. It's just a scaled-down version of what Nike and Chevrolet or Coca-Cola have done over, again, many, many decades with the expenditure of uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. It's the same thing, just scaled down, which means we can do so um, for a fraction, an extreme fraction of the cost, um, and also in a fraction of the time. So that's what this is all about, and you've got to do it, whether you want to or not. Uh, YouTube, Google+, Twitter, Active Rain, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, what you want to have as your missions as you do these, uh, as you get involved in social media and increasing your social media presence, is that you want to make sure that you're posting content and that that content has relevance to what you do, first and foremost, relevance. Secondly, you want to make sure that it's fresh and updated. That's the uh, full-time job aspect of uh, social media marketing is that you've got to keep your content fresh. It's not enough to post something um, of relevance and then let it sit there because guess what? A month later, it's no longer relevant perhaps um, or it's certainly been seen and um, just the way the spiders electronically uh, work 
uh, for search result and so forth, um, relevance and freshly updated content, verbiage, uh, what have you, is extremely paramount to that effort. High frequency um, plays into that. It's uh, something you should do, um, you know, not every hour. There are people that I've joked, um, you know, this, this person must live on Facebook. Um, meaning that they're they're always in touch with it they've always got their finger on 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 the phone ready to react um, like respond repost redirect something um, and the reality is you don't have to do it like that but high frequency means that it should at the very 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 least be a daily activity and that's uh, across the board for all of your social media presence um, this has got to be something that you hit daily it really is uh, it's not a full-time job. I think uh, for most people, for the average size presence, um, I think it can be something that's done in uh, maybe a little more than an hour a day if you can commit that much, but well worth uh, the time that you expend on that. If it's just an hour, maybe 90 minutes even, if your presence is larger and you have more accounts. Um, groups, don't just post in, in your page. Um, take the time to post updates in your page, and this is for LinkedIn, Facebook, ActiveRain, and Twitter. T you know, make your tweets relevant and keep them fresh and do them frequently. Uh, same thing with your Google Plus posts. So all of these accounts and all of these social media outlets have the same type of setup. They all look different or you know, they may be supposedly for different functions, but as we apply them to our business, there's really only um, a very short set uh, of things that we're trying to be concerned with, and they all address that. So um, they're all the same in that regard. But add groups. So at LinkedIn, you have the ability to join and create and become the moderator of groups. Same thing with Facebook. So as you post updates on your page, your profile, your business page, or whatever it may be, go ahead and copy and paste and post that same content across many, many different groups, which of course necessitates that you join groups, um, join relevant groups. So if you're on there as a mortgage professional, uh, don't join groups about botany or, you know, planting a garden. It's not relevant. And the people who are in those groups probably don't want to hear your content or see your post. So find groups that are relevant to real estate and mortgage or the sales business or what have you, but be relevant in your joining of groups and then post content in the groups. Be careful not to spam the groups because the group moderators, um, as I call them, uh, you know, internet Nazis, um, they'll get on you if you're spamming their, their group or posting content that's not relevant to their members. So be wary of that. It's just the courteous thing to do. If you start, uh, create your own group, you're the moderator, I'm sure you'd appreciate the same in return. So um, there's a certain etiquette is what I'm leading to. So just kind of follow along with that and you'll be fine. But absolutely involve groups in your social media plan and your posting. Create groups, join them, post in them. Um, I have a group on LinkedIn, which you should all be members of. It's uh, called REMP, R-E-M-P, stands for Real Estate Mortgage Pros. Um, and it's something I started a while ago, and there's uh, close to 8,000 members in REMP now. Um, one of the great things is, is that at uh, every seven days, LinkedIn allows me the ability to send a message to my entire group. I am the creator and the moderator of the group, so at a, a few at a few clicks, I can send a message to 8,000 folks who are real estate and mortgage professionals. Um, it gives me that ability every seven days. Everyone else can contact and post things on the group message board, but as the moderator, um, I have the sole exclusive ability to send that message into their email, their Gmail, their Yahoo, their Hotmail, whatever email account they have associated with LinkedIn. That's where my message goes every seven days. I can send a recruiting message. I can send um, a message about um, – if I'm in, on the commercial finance perspective, I want to um, send messaging to real estate agents um, who are working in commercial or may have a commercial client. So I can use it for lead generation um, in many ways, but I only I have that ability. So that for that reason alone on LinkedIn, it's worth um, the effort to start your own group because only the group moderator has that ability. Um, blogging, as I said, is something I do. Um, many of you know I'm a writer. I've published a, a couple of books. Um, so I like to write. Um, a lot of people hate it, can't stand it, don't think they're good at it. They write something, they think it sucks. Um, 
But here's the thing about blogging. Don't be intimidated by it because you don't have to write the content. Uh, you can go to uh, CNN Money or um, get an RSS feed of some sort, uh, relevant, maybe interest rates or whatever it may be, and you can copy and paste content into your blog as long as you always give credit, of course, to the actual writer or the source of the information. You're free to repost anything, essentially, you find on the Internet. It's public domain. So if you find something on the, inter on the Internet that would be relevant to what you do and, and maybe the people you want to speak to, then you can have a blog and you can post something daily or weekly. Or it's a once a week blog or a daily blog, but you can post content that you find. SAR for real estate agents, SAR and NAR is a great site for stats about the real estate industry, um, the market locally. You can always find relevant, good information um, at websites like that. And again, you can be a blogger without being a writer necessarily. So we talk about marketing pieces and the art of the leave behind. Uh, the leave behind is a leave behind piece because as you're farming or marketing or going into businesses, um, you know, you want to leave something a little bit more than just your business card. Uh, your business card really says it all, and it's, uh, again, the most paramount piece and tool that all of us have in our arsenal. But, you know, a marketing piece, well-crafted, a postcard or a flyer, a brochure, uh, something of that nature can say a whole lot more than your business card. But there are a couple of rules of thumb. You want to make sure that it's well-branded. Um, there should be no ambiguity or confusion about the fact that uh, you work for Elite Realty Services or ERS or it's ERS Home Services, um, whatever it might be. Uh, also, compliance. Your marketing pieces must be compliant. Uh, I think for each licensed industry, I know for real estate, for example, for sure, and mortgage, uh, you've got to have the license number on your piece. It's got to be visible. It can be no smaller than the smallest font size on there. So if the smallest font size on all your lettering and verbiage is 12, you can't have your license number be at 8. It must be no smaller than the smallest font on the marketing piece. Call to action. What, uh, what is the purpose of leaving a leave behind if you don't leave a call to action? Your call to action should, um, uh, it can be something as simple as uh, get property listing information, click uh, or uh, call here, this uh, toll free number, or um, go to this web address, or watch this video. You want some sort of call to action where you're asking, not telling, uh, but asking them to um, Take some action that's going to result in you capturing their information. Because, again, folks, this is all about CRM. It's all about market uh, lead, uh, lead capture, lead generation and lead capture. So good marketing pieces include postcards. I think we've covered that. Flyers, as you see here on the screen. Brochures and a lot of the uh, we've dis the discussion thus far this far has talked about sources where you can get um, good quality trifold brochures with a gloss coating. So these are brochures that that uh, there's a trifold. So there's three page front or three panel front and a three panel back. Um, good high quality marketing pieces, high density. You can get a lot of information into a three panel trifold marketing piece. Door hangers, um, we just sent out a 1,000 um, to a West Sacramento area. Um, door hangers, uh, you can get them from Tidal, you can get them from a lot of different places, or you can make them or have these third-party uh, print shops and graphic designers make them for you. Uh, we have some templates, so if you're interested, um, please reach out. We're happy to share any of the artwork that we have or that we've done or created um, with you. HTML, email, that's your constant contact. I, I spoke of that already. Constant contact is going to be the great source for HTML, email. Um, but then again, any CRM tool will include that function as well, that functionality or that component. Um, conversion, for example, for the real estate agents, um, your email is sent out in HTML form. What that means is that it's not just text. It's not just um, you know black letters, writing, type. Um, font type. It's actually images, pictures. Um, you can send an email if you're looking at the screen, the flyer there, um, Silviana's flyer. Um, you could send that as an HTML email, complete with the images, the text, everything, and even clickable links to direct them or redirect them as you choose. 
So HTML is, is powerful. It used to be a new thing. Now it's just not. Now if you're not sending HTML email, you might as well not even bother sending out the email unless it's a direct email speaking to someone or response. But if you're marketing via email and you're not sending HTML email, I, I don't even know where you fit at this point. It's it's obsolescence. It's uh, unfortunately one of the tie-ins to technology. Every task is manageable with the right tools. I learned a long time ago, and I am a creative person. I like to build things and and uh, just do things like that in my spare time when I whenever I have that. Um, and I learned a long time ago from uh, I think my grandfather that uh, any any task, whether you're fixing a car or and I've done that, I like to do that. I like to get in under my own hood and replace the alternator or replace the fan belt. The, the serpentine belt, um, brakes, uh, not just pads either, everything. So, and I've done that, um, and I understand that you can learn anything on YouTube. It's, you know, it's my go-to source, but the reality is even after you learn how to do it, if you don't have the right tool, so if you're trying to get a bolt out that requires um, a particular type um, of tool, and you're trying to improvise with something you think can get the job done, you know, you're likely going to strip the uh, the tool, the bolt, or your knuckles um, because you're not using the right tool. So my biggest lesson for you is that any task is manageable with the right tools, and CRM is certainly one of those tasks. A lot of people are intimidated by it. That's why it doesn't get done. Well, stop being intimidated by it. It's, it's nothing to be intimidated by because you can acquire and have all the right tools to make effective, comprehensive, and diligent CRM something that you can do in your sleep. So in preparation for lesson two, I want you to get or get your CRM software properly organized. So what I'm saying is if you don't currently have something, get one. Make a selection. Make a move. If you want to talk to me about that, maybe ask what I think about it then do it. I've given you the recommendation and the link to go ahead and get Office VP. Um, get a one-month trial for free and see um, what you think about that particular software. Um, and therefore, I'd be able to help you with that because I'm currently using it. We can kind of uh, do it together. Um, if you don't already have one, then get one. Um, I'm sorry, let me reverse that. If you already have one, then get the current one you have organized. Um, when I say organize, I'm talking about having categories based on who the client is, what their need is, first-time buyer, investors, move up, move down, empty nesters, whatever it might be. Um, and then secondly, you want to have these people categorized on um, their state of readiness, which is something I talk about in the book, The ABCs of Prospecting. Uh, there's a shameless plug, but you want to get your database organized across two fronts. Basically, who the customer is and what their state of readiness is. That means when are they ready to interact with you or engage you for that service that you're providing? Um, is it six months? Are they ready now? That's your A prospects. They're ready to go now. They're already out there actively looking and talking to solar companies or looking at Zillow for properties. And when they need an agent, they're just going to call whatever listing agents on, on Zillow. Um, so you want to engage A prospects right now. Um, those are your hot prospects. Your B prospects in the ABCs of prospecting are your warm prospects. That's where the bulk of your business is going to come from because your your we call it your warm contact list or your WCL. WCL. Um, warm contacts are where the A's come from a lot of times. A lot of times, hey, we get lucky. We're out there. We're prospecting every day, and we meet someone. Yeah, I'm actually looking for a house right now. Great. <laughs> Wow, how fortunate of me to have bumped into you, you know, uh, at the park here or whatever it might be. Um, the reality is that does not happen every day. The majority of your A's come from your B column, meaning that these are warm contacts that you cultivated, that you've conducted good CRM on, and that you're ready to move with, um, and they're ready to move excuse me, ready to move with you. So you've converted them or at least worked with them as they moved from warm uh, to hot. So that's where you, the, the warm contact list is the, where the majority of your business is going to come from. Um, C's, we never call them cold, they're cool. So the ability to um, separate and segregate your database further based on the state of readiness is vital. So I want you to start thinking about that. Again, if you don't have a CRM software, 
make a choice, get one. They're pretty much all the same. They differ in bells and whistles, but beyond the bells and whistles, they, pro they, they pretty much all have the same basic functionality which we need um, and which I'm talking about and I advocate and have for many years. So pick one, make a move, go forward. If you've already got one, let's start organizing it properly because I'm willing to wager that it's not. Um, or at least in the way that I have advocate, which um, is tried and true. So let's get your CRM tool properly organized. Um, certainly happy to talk to you um, on the side in that regard, but also um, as you attend subsequent sessions in the six session series, you're going to get the benefit of that training as well. Um, when you logged in, you probably saw a list of PDF docs that you could download. They're available for download. One of them was the SOI mapping tool. Um, you're going to use that to kind of shake the tree. When I ask people how many contacts they have or how many people they know, they'll say a number. Whatever that number is, I always am willing to wager that uh, it's actually substantially higher and they just don't know it. So the SOI mapping tool would really help you. It's a memory jogger. As you look at it, you're like, hey, well, you know, I know a lot of these people, um, whether it's a mailman, uh, doorman, um, landscaping person, teller at the bank, guy at the dry cleaner that you use, whatever it might be, checker at the grocery store, whatever. Um, other parents with your kids, uh, whether it's cheerleading, football, um, sports, soccer, whatever it might be, you're going to know people um, more than you think. The definition of who belongs in your SOI um, industry uh, standard mistake is to assume that's only family and friends. Um, the reality is that it's not just family and friends. It's family, friends, associates, acquaintances, and everyone you meet and that crosses your life path with any sort of frequency or consistency. So that just simply means that if you see Tom today, you know you're going to see Tom next week, next month, tomorrow, a couple weeks from now, but you know there will be a time again in the not so distant future where you will see Tom and your lives, your paths will cross again. That person is in your SOI. That defines your SOI and the memory jogger will help you identify all of those people in your life. Add 20 new contacts to your database. This is only worth doing if it's worth doing. If you're just listening to me and you're not taking the actions, you're not going to get any results from CRM. If we're going to conduct CRM, folks, you've got to have people in your database um, upon which to conduct the CRM. I hope that makes sense. So just as a little gamer for you guys, um, go ahead and, and let's put that to the test. So by, by next week's session, which is Monday, um, same same bat time, same bat channel, 5 p.m., lesson number three. We're going to talk about growing your database and therefore growing your business. I want you in preparation for that session to have added no less than 20 new contacts to your database. You have a full week to do it, including a weekend. The weather's nice. Get out there. It should not be a problem to add or increase your database by 20 people. And if that means you have 20, then great. That means you started. If you add zero and next week you have 20, then you got 20. If you had 200, now you have 220. But let's go out and make it a, a mission for you to get 20 new contacts added to your database uh, before next week's session. Begin to construct your action plan. Everyone should have an action plan. As I said earlier on the first slide, um, these are the actions or activities of CRM, but they're really not productive are going to return a result if you don't put them to play into an action plan. You need to consider your resources, time and budget, time and money. How much time and how much money do you actually have to allocate to your new sales business or your existing sales business here? Think about that. Think about the activities of your plan. I'm going to get into that and name them for you. Maybe um, you've got um, several of them uh, down already, but I'm going to add to that and hopefully I can be of a supplemental benefit to some of the more seasoned agents. For you new agents, um, I'm going to give you um, just a templated action plan that you can follow or not, add to, modify as you choose. But let's discuss any modifications, especially if you've never really done CRM before. 
Um, so let's think about that. So just think about the activities. When I say think about folks, I'm talking about maybe jot down um, in kind of an outline of a plan or what you think your plan should be moving forward based on the discussions we've had today and uh, the orientation last week. And again, I, I reiterate, if you have not uh, did not participate and hear the orientation, uh, the overview of the full course last Monday. Uh, it has been recorded and uploaded, um, but it's not publicly accessible. I have to send you the link, so please send me an email requesting that link so that you can have the benefit of the orientation. With this lesson, you'll be fully prepared for lesson number two. So the bottom line, folks, uh, we're three minutes over, but I think that's okay because we started three minutes late. I am on time. Um, let's get busy and be productive. Uh, I will take questions if you've got them. Let me open this back up and see if we have any questions. These are going to, is there a go-to meeting code for the next session? Um, that's a good question. The code or link for the next session next week will be emailed to you um, just as this one was. So you'll get it um, probably a couple times this week. And then the day of, you know, I blast it, so you're going to get it at least two or three times the day of. But if you don't have it, um, by start time, just simply let me know, send me a text, and I'll send you the link. It's that easy. And you're welcome, Stefan. You're all welcome. I thank you for attending. Um, and really, like I said, it's just about getting started. So you have um, some marching orders and in terms of uh, getting the right tools and getting um, started because we really can't start until you you have the right tools. Um, once you have the right tools, um, we're good to go and we can really get into this. So I thank you for your time. Um, if you need to, you have my email at ers.elkgrove@gmail.com. at gmail.com. Again, that's ers.elkgrove@gmail.com. at gmail.com. Go ahead and email me, text me. That's my cell phone number there. Um, I'll answer your questions. If you need that link, I will send that out to you. Um, but please make use of the PDFs I uploaded so that you can download some of those tools of CRM. Thank you.